So what do you remember, what's most significant for you about your experience with the Oboe and Susan? The first time I remember Obo was seeing him perform in the 80s. Um, what a treasure to have Ghanaian music in Portland. I heard him playing the drums, and then he, he played with Kukudu back then, was the name. And um, it wasn't like anything we'd heard before, and, and their outfits were so beautiful. And then I got to know Obo as a friend through um, my husband, who had been one of his first students in Portland. And then we began to see Obo and Susan more, a little more socially. And our children went to the Homoa day camp. That was a privilege. Both kids are five years apart. They learned uh, how to make kentic, or printed cloth. They learned African drumming, African dancing. They performed. And it was a one or two week camp, but it was such wonderful exposure. And it was at different um, venues around Portland at different times. And we go to the Homo Festival. The first time I went, I went to Pioneer Square. Then later on, it was at um, downtown Portland Street. And um, there would be all these different African uh, clothing vendors and drum vendors. And, and they did the libation ceremony and they did the dances. And it was just a treasure to have that in Portland. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, this is a big transition for my mom. Uh, my mom has been in the arts since the 70s when we lived in Hood River and she went back to school and got her arts administration degree and then worked in the arts in the schools program where she met Ovo. He sat outside her office door. He wanted to have a date with her. He waited. I hear for more than one day and then she went out on a date with him. And then that's how Ovo and Susan met. And then ultimately they moved into the house I was living in because she was my mom. And Oboe's first band started there, Kukrudu, and Susan kept managing lots of arts programs during that time, not full time with Oboe, um, until ultimately she was full time with Oboe, Oboe's programs. And that was all encompassing. And many decades have gone by. And now she is able to retire. And they built, I think that her and Obo reached a lot of the goals they wanted big and small. And I'm very happy that she's able to take a breath now, do this at her own pace, and hopefully travel and spend time with friends and not work as much. So we all know she's probably going to keep working doing something. There you go. <laughs> Well, tonight is about Susan, about Susan. And I don't know, the impact of Susan over the decades has been a profound experience, decency, humility, tolerance, compassion. What Susan did for the project was to spread grace with it on behalf of Obo and the music of Ghana, wherever they went. It is truly fair to say that there's no Obo without Susan. And her character and her personality have become indistinguishable from what Obo did and who he remains. So when we think about the Obo Audi Legacy Project, it now tonight the transition is the Obo and Susan. Susan and Obo, and I just got all my family. And it's 
Let's take those cameras in the background because I do production. Thank you. I love you, Susan.